Hi, I'm Tony Brownlee from The Light Academy. Today I'm going to look at dodging and burning. So, dodging and burning, should you even be bothered? I'm going to suggest that you should. Results like these just don't come straight out of camera. It's working with light, not just in camera, but in post-production that makes the difference. I'm going to show you what can be achieved in just 10 minutes. However, I'm going to be working on a different image, all in Adobe Camera Raw, no plugins, no frequency separation, just you controlling the light. Let's take a look. Here we are in Adobe Bridge. We locate the file and right click and open in Camera Raw. I've already made some initial changes, so I'm going over to Snapshots. And here's the raw image as it comes in. And these are my base settings. So I'll click on Base Settings and go back to the Basics tab. You can pause the video here if you want just to take a look and see what I've done within the Basics tab. You do have shadow and highlight warnings up here, but I tend not to use those. I just go visually with the screen as it's calibrated. From the base image, we're now going to look at dodging and burning. First thing I'm going to do is to turn this to black and white. Don't forget you also have options for black and white profiles down here within the palette. Now choosing the adjustment brush opens up the adjustment brush palette and this is where we're going to work in for the dodging and burning. Down at the bottom here you have your settings for your brush. For the size here I use the keyboard which is the brackets keys and that's a quick way of working within the image. I generally keep the feather to 100%. The flow I take at around about 25% which means I can build up by stroking rather than going with a full amount. And I leave the density at 100 so I can get the full density for the dodging and burning. There's also auto mask here but I generally don't use that as it leaves hard edges and I like to work in dodging and burning in the old-fashioned way with a very wide feather and just overlaying where necessary just like we did in the darkroom. Down here is an option for viewing your masks and you can change the colors here. I use yellow. There's also a toggle for the overlay and these here will actually swap to previous states. While we're down on the bottom bar it's always worth noting something that gets overlooked by a lot of people. Down here when you save or open an image just make sure you're working in 16-bit and not 8 bits. Obviously if you export as a JPEG that would be 8-bit. Also up here you can also build your own presets for dodging and burning. Just put your values in the sliders and then click on new local correction preset and it will allow you to save them. So one of the things you should really do is before you start dodging and burning, do take a look at the image and assess what you need to do. This should be very much in the old school styles in the days of the darkroom. If you take a look here at these images and you will see the sort of notes that used to be taken. So we're going to look at the background, mid-ground and foreground and then some detailing. So we're on the adjustment brush, we're in black and white and we're going to first of all look at burning in the sky. Going with a larger brush, just on the left of each slider there's a little icon and if you click on that, that resets everything to zero apart from the slider you're working on. So we're going to take this down to around about minus one and just sweep across that sky. Another little sweep across there and then just go back to the slider and fine tune where you need it. I am going to take away a little bit probably across here and up at the top here you have new add and erase so I'm going to click on erase and you can also use alt on the keyboard and again just pull that back a few clicks. So checking the sky I'm pretty happy with that maybe another one just here. I'm going to add a new brush. We're on burning, so negative. Just one click's done there. Now onto this mid-ground here. We're just going to lighten it up a little bit. So positive exposure. Again, it's always a guess, but around about one. Smaller brush. Just open up the shadows in that mid-ground. 
that's looking great. I'm going to add a new brush again and just look at this area here in the reflection because that's looking a little bit too dark now. A little bit bigger with a brush. Open that up. I'll pull that back a little bit. That's just a bit too much. And then I'm just going to darken this field down here a bit. So put some burning in with a new brush. Stroke and a click there, that's put it where it needs to be. Again, another little check just to see where you are. And we go on to the foreground on this water area in particular. A new brush and we're going to actually dodge this water area just a little bit. I'm only taking it up just under the one. Zoom out with Control or Command minus on the keyboard so I can get along this edge here. Just using the feathering, I'm going to lighten that edge up just a tiny bit. And again, just check it with the slider. It's about there works. Now zooming in for the rock. Using the space bar to bring in the hand tool. Make sure we select a new brush. Exposure I'm going to bring down a little bit. And shadows. A smaller brush and just paint in for these shadow areas. And two or three sweeps actually builds up the flow. So I'm up to around about 75% with three sweeps there. Again, I can just check what's happening with the sliders. And I'm pretty happy with that. So using the space bar again, let's move over to the next rock. A lot smaller this time. Those have opened up nicely. Slightly larger brush. Those have opened up good. I think this is the last one here. So that's the background, mid-ground and foreground sorted out. Now look at some detailing. For me the whole emphasis of this picture is this little boathouse here along the shoreline. So we're going to bring that out a little bit. Again a new brush, reset the exposure and we're going to be dodging that in. So bring that up. and just paint along that shoreline. Adjust as required. I'm going to use the Alt key to bring the eraser in and just cut back that top area there. Again, just feathering in using the edge of the brush. A new brush and I'm going to open up the reflections. But these I'm going to tone down a little bit more as they are reflections. With a new brush I'm now going to look at some detailing just in this area here. So we're looking at dodging first and this is with a smaller brush. Just kicking some light onto the tops of these trees. With a new brush I'm also going to paint some light into this ridge line. Just checking that. A new brush again and a little bit of painting of light with some dodging down into this reflection.
again, just checking that. Don't forget, if you make any mistakes, you can always use Command Z to go back. Also, you can click on these little markers here for the overlays and press delete on the keyboard and they will disappear. I'm just going to undo that because I do want to keep that here. I think the last bit is this tree up here on the top. So make sure we're on a new brush and we're going to be dodging that, but not too much, I think. Again, zooming out gives me some room. Just stroke in there. I'm going to bring in some of the shadows again. So yeah, quite a high, quite a high marker on there. It's useful to assess everything again just when you're finished. And it's always worth just turning the picture upside down and zooming out. That way you look at the picture as shapes and tones rather than the picture itself. Turn these overlays off. And I can already see actually there's a dark area here that needs some work. So it's very heavily balanced over here. So let's sort that out. Make sure we have a new brush. That's about right. And just a few sweeps and clicks just to sort that out. You can already see it's improving a lot with the balance. So back the other way up, zoom out a little. Yeah, that's pretty good, I'm quite happy. If we go back to the hand tool, and then over on the tabs here, click on snapshots, and we can actually save our work as a snapshot there. Give it a name. And that's finished unless you want to do any more work on that. You may want to add a vignette, so let's go over to the effects tab. Put in a full vignette so I can assess all the other sliders. Full feather, bring that midpoint in, check the roundness, and then pull back that vignette. Zoom out as well, so it's still quite heavy. I'm going to pull that midpoint in some more. Good, I'm happy with that. I'm going to add another snapshot. And that's done. Let's take a look at it compared to the base settings. And that's quite a big difference. All we need to do now is either save the image, we can open it up if you wanted to do anything else in Photoshop, but more importantly, if you don't do either of those things, make sure you do click Done. That will save all of this work. Great thing about Bridges, it also updates the images here, so when you're browsing, you will see your adjustments as they are.